Okay then, so this is pretty much the end of the uh, implementation part of my project and um, so now for a bit of a final demo. Uh, what I've done is on the side of the printer I've redone all the electronics. It used to be uh, the pile of stuff you can see sort of scattered about here and it's been replaced by this. Uh, surprisingly it's more neatly wired than it used to be uh, despite the amount of mess you can probably see. We've got a board with a microcontroller on it, an uh, Ethernet connection to a computer, uh, we've got end stops which have been added recently and uh, those are connected up to a series of motor controllers on the side there. Uh, we've got the printer in here with the print head and, and so on and uh, various sensors inside such as these end stops, the temperature sensor in the bed and in the, in the heater itself. So uh, if I first off just home the device, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to move that print head so it sits in the uh, ring on the left. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 3D model uh, of a cube, generate G-code for it using ScheneForge. Uh, nothing particularly uh, new here, this is the same old, same old software. And once that's done, I'm going to send it to the printer using my um, own command. So once I've done that, the printer will move itself into the waiting position. Uh, wait until it's hot, which it already is. Extrude some plastic, which it will then wipe off on the uh, rubber pad in front of it. Okay. And it will now start printing. Uh, and you can see I've also built a debugging interface. We've got temperature monitors uh, for the extruder and for the platform itself. Um, and we've also got a sort of monitor to show you where it currently is in 3D. There's a small green plus somewhere on there. And also just buffer utilization uh, for the communications with the computer. So you can see we're just starting off with a simple layer of plastic on the bottom. And um, as you can see, this causes the bed to get rather hot. Uh, because we're dumping plastic at uh, 225 degrees um, onto the bed. Um, so once we've printed that, we'll print another few layers. Uh, all this generates uh, a certain amount of blinking on the side, which is all rather pretty and rather unnecessary. So onto the next layer. So the printer itself is printing in ABS plastic um, and uh, it's coming off a reel down here which you should just about be able to see moving ever so, ever so slightly. Anyway, uh, the plastic's coming off there and the, uh, the printer you can see now we're going to the print and we're filling with a kind of fill pattern uh, rather than just solid plastic because that would be a bit of a waste. Uh, not that any of this was a waste whatsoever. Um, this pattern inside kind of forms this kind of sort of honeycomb pattern if you tear away the bottom layer of it. Um, and it's nice and strong, but it's uh, um, but it's much lighter and uses much less plastic and takes much less time to print. Um, so yes, what we'll come out with is something that looks a bit like this. And you can see on top, some of the parts of the printer are in fact printed with the printer. So we've got a handle here uh, which lifts up and down the print head uh, on the Z-axis, uh, so you can manually adjust it. Hopefully once the end stops for that are set up, so we need some sort of lollipop stick or something to interrupt that end stop up there. Uh, hopefully once that's done we won't need that handle anymore because it will just be able to calibrate itself. But uh, while we're waiting for something to mount that on to be fitted, uh, that's, uh, that's what we use. Interestingly with the old electronics this was the same handle printed out and it didn't do a very good job. 
Uh, not entirely sure why, but uh, this printer did, did always seem to have issues printing anything with a lot of details, such as circles, which of course if you print it properly are somewhat infinitely detailed, but uh, evidently that was too detailed a print for that, uh, for that run. So this part here is the uh, extruder, which consists of a motor and a gearbox, and this thing here which pulls in plastic off the reel, so if I pull that back, you can sort of see the rate at which the plastic is being pulled in. Again, it's really, really quite slow, because this plastic is quite thick, um, and it's coming out extruded very, very thin. So the water is pulled through that mechanism and it goes into a heater. Um, the heater is, uh, it melts the plastic and uh, because it's then forced out onto our printed model. Uh, it comes out to sort of about this thickness, which is rather a lot thinner than the sort of stock that it comes off. So hopefully coming up to one of the last sort of central layers. Actually, I can't actually remember. Uh, software we're printing uh, the 8.61 millimeters uh, the layer at that height so they will be done soon um, While this is happening, dear listener, you may notice that one of my housemates is a big bit of a pain. Uh, anyway, uh, the top layer of this has now been printed, which is uh, solid, so we have three solid top layers uh, in order to give it a sort of decent solid top, which, if it was calibrated better, would in theory be waterproof, but in practice is not. This should be the last layer. Uh, you can see there's a sort of a very squashed 3D view of the, uh, the same thing there. Um, at this point, you can see the red line on the buffer means that it's uh, it's processed nearly all of its G code, so it's finished now, and uh, the platforms move forward. And what's happening is the temperature has been set to off, uh, which uh, allows the platform to cool down a bit. Now, if it if it was to eject the model straight away, it would come out and be somewhat squashy. So uh, that's why it's allowed to cool down. Um, so you can see it cools down fairly quickly. Um, uh, we keep the uh, print head on, um, which means that we can immediately continue on with the next job because that's the slowest thing to heat up. Um, so, uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll cool down fairly soon. Um, you can see on the buffer here the um, the green line, uh, which is reduced not quite all the way, uh, is just the remaining commands that eject the uh, the piece from the printer and return it to its home position and turn it off. So there's only uh, about 17 commands left for it to execute. This is uh, fantastically exciting. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, yes, yeah, so in a second, uh, there we go.
it'll eject it. And there we go, we have a newly printed cube uh, with an outline that we can just sort of pick off. And the printer will turn itself to the heating position, uh, inject a little bit of plastic, um, which uh, can add to the pile of rejected plastic there, and then wipe itself off. Once it's done that, it'll return back into the calibration ring. And then the whole thing turns off, and uh, we have a nice 3D printed cube, and temperatures falling, and uh, a job well done. There we go.